If you're going to screw around with hot rods, learning to read plugs is one of those paramount skills. It'll tell you every single thing you need to know about what's going on inside the engine. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the tune-up. But reading the plugs themselves, just looking at the plug and seeing its condition, isn't always everything. Sometimes you need to do a little detective work and some deductive reasoning. But the plug read, especially with, it, with a fresh tune-up, an engine or a car that you're just working through, the, a true plug read is of ultimate importance. And that's what we went for this last Saturday night. So let me give you a background what brings us to this point. So you saw the last couple of videos that we did where we talked about the idling and fuel flow through the, through the engine and whatnot and the measures that we did to correct those things. So now what we have is we have an engine that idles clean and smooth at 1,000 RPM. It doesn't foul or dirty any plugs in particular. It's, it, it could be a little cleaner, but it's fine. It's like it's right there. And we have, we made a full throttle run and we were dead lean and we had some weird distribution. So we staggered the jetting on the carburetor. This is where we're at the last couple of videos. So we staggered the jetting on the carburetor, we increased the jetting, and we staggered it, and we needed to make a good hard run. So last week, it was about 90 degrees, humid, and we were screwing around with the car. It was quiet out, so it was, all right, let's just, let's just make a quick couple of gear pull with this and see what it feels like. So I rolled it out front. And remember, I can't do this all the time. It's like people are like, well, why don't you just run the car all the time? I can't do it all the time. I have neighbors across the street over here with kids and all of that. I have a great relationship with the local cops. I don't want to screw that up. So I do it sparingly. That said, we uh, brought the car around and I turned onto the street, didn't really stop. I just rolled, okay, so this was like a, like a five mile an hour roll, and I flat punched it. When I flat punched it, she took off like a rocket. Car was pulling hard, strong, sounded great. I hit second gear. When I hit second gear, I noticed that the oil pressure gauge was, was hitting for zero, right? I ran it out just a little bit further, probably a little bit further than I should have, but it felt good, you know, so it feels good just staying a little bit. And, uh, and I was there. I brought it back, and I was very content with the way it ran. It felt great. I didn't bother looking at the plugs because they were the warm-up plugs, so there's no sense in trying to get a read off of that. But I knew that I probably hurt the motor, so I dropped the pin, and number one and number five, the rod bearings, were ugly. So I swapped them out. I polished up the crank a little kick. I swapped them out and looked at the situation, what caused this. And I know it's the oil pan. I baffled. I did everything I could think of. I could anticipate to try to make the oil pan work correctly, but it doesn't work. And I understand why uh, the ruster, we did that feature on the ruster, I understand now why he did all of the things he did with his oiling system. So I need to rethink the oil system on this car. All right, so now, car's back together again, it's running. I know it's gonna hurt itself, I wanna get one run. I wanna take it to the track and I wanna get one run, one representative run, and I wanna get a good plug read on this run. So, we head out to the track, we pitted, at the, at the extreme end, we were the last car in the pits, closest to the shutoff area as we could get. Warmed the car up, and then installed our run plugs. So these are virgin plugs. And what I'm about to show you now is why, when you do a plug read, you cannot use a used spark plug. It has to be new, out of the box, it has to be a virgin plug, and you need to follow these procedures, right, or where you're not getting any good information. Because we followed the procedure to a T, we got excellent information. So I'm going to show you how this all, how this all transpired. So, warm the car up, installed these plugs, pushed the car to the staging lanes. Didn't start the car until the staging lane, until the, the lane moved. So now, we idled, just gave it a little bit of gas, and we idled around, right? Decided to do just a minor, just to clean the tires, just the, the least burnout we can get. Because all we're really concerned with right now is how these plugs are going to how they're going to show on a hard run. So, did a tire cleaning burnout, stage the car. As a matter of habit, I brought up the RPM. I wasn't watching the tack, but I brought it up probably around 2,000 RPM or thereabouts against the brake. This is the car staged on the starting line. It sounded a little deep, right? But nothing that really got my attention. It, it, it sounded just a little bit deep. All right, 
Tree comes down, I hit it. Instead of the thing reacting the way it did on the street over here, it held back. It stumbled, it didn't feel, it just didn't have any oomph, okay? And like before I even got to the tree, I'm telling myself, oh Jesus, it's a blown run. I like, okay, what a waste of time. As I'm passing the tree, car actually starts to feel good. I hit second gear, it feels good again. I'm like, okay, I'll get a, at least I get a mile an hour out of this. Third gear, and she lays down. She just doesn't doesn't have any pull, doesn't have any oomph. Okay, so shut the car off, coast around the first shutoff, coast right back to the pit, and pull the plugs out. And this is what I find. Here's our here's our initial plug read. All right. So, whoops. <laughs> Not much metal under there. All right, so here's our initial plug read. Here's six through one, all right? And I'm gonna show you, this one here is special. I'm gonna show you this one in a second. So I pull the plugs out and I said to myself, oh my God, this thing is dead lean. How is this dead lean? I jetted it up into the middle 70s and I would have thought it would have been too fat, right? I was actually, before we left, I was like, you know what? Let me back down a number or two all the way around. I'll keep the stagger right because the stagger feels good. You know, the, the plug read was even. So I'll keep the stagger right, but I'll pull maybe, you know, a, a jet size out all the way around. I said, nah, we'll just go. So that night at the track, it was 60 degrees and it wasn't humid, a beautiful air. And that could account a lot for the lean condition. But still, it's a lot leaner. A couple of them are just like absolute ghosts. All right, so here's number four. All right, so I left the track saying to myself, it just needs more fuel. All right, I gotta just add fuel. I'll go up like two sizes all the way around, fix the oil pan issue, we'll come back and try it again. But we stopped at Waffle House on the way home, okay? And I took the plugs in with me and we we're waiting for our food. Now I'm examining the plugs, I'm really looking at them. And this one jumped out at me. So, and this is why you have to do these things with new plugs. So this is number three. Now if you look at this at a glance, it looks like it's lean, like it's never been run. But now if you look right here, you'll see it's got tan, as if it was run. You also can see some carbon inside there. And there's another one here. Uh, yeah, this, this is number six, and there's some carbon inside there too, but the plug itself is lean, dead lean. How the hell did that happen? Well, this is where your detective work and your, your deductive reasoning has to come into play. The only difference between what I did that night, Saturday night, and what I did on the street was on the street, I flat punched it from an idle, and at the track, I brought it up against the converter. Not all the way, but just it came off idle. Now, where did that stumble come from that it didn't have a stumble before? It had a fat spot and then lean. And that corresponded with the way the car felt to me. I left the starting line, it didn't have anything. At about the tree, it came on and then it went away again. What happened? What's the difference? part throttle. All I did was open part throttle when I staged. This thing went fat when I went part throttle and then it leaned out. Now also, now we're at part throttle, it's fat and I aggravated it with the accelerator pump because now she's sitting there fat. I hit the throttle and now two accelerator pumps are, are adding to the mix. So this really sucked all of the oomph out of the car's launch. Once it ate that gulp of gas, it went. So now I start the engine, right? And I'm looking, okay, why is this thing part throttle rich and full throttle lean? And what I found was with the engine idling, if I brought it just off of idle, if I open the throttle just a little bit, if you look at the boosters, the boosters are raining fuel. The primary boosters are just raining gasoline. It's not atomizing it. This is a small engine. The carburetor is intended for a bigger engine. The boosters are, are constructed in such a way as to handle 350, 400 cubic inches worth of V8, not 225 inches worth of slant six. So at that part throttle opening, there wasn't enough pull through the booster to atomize the fuel. And so what I got was raining fuel that didn't atomize, puddled in certain cylinders like number three here, 
And then, after I left the starting line, once it got past the gulp of, of extra fuel from the accelerator pumps, now it's running on just what it's pulling through the jets, and she was lean. Now, well, I mean, I, I obviously I checked it, so I had part throttle raining fuel through the boosters, and then when I went to full throttle, the rain stopped and I had good atomization. So I know now that it's only when we're just off of idle, we just got come off the transfer slot before we're actually we, before we actually have the, the 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 vacuum signal pointed directly at the booster. You know when it's got to do this. That's when there isn't enough pull to atomize the fuel through the booster. So that leads us to where we go with this. Now, the carburetor size is right. The jetting is right. Um, it needs to, when I say the jetting, I mean the stagger is right. I need to up the overall volume to compensate for the overall lean condition over here. But at this point, I need to either get the car to where it reacts from a dead idle flat punch, or I need to work with the boosters to get it so that when I've got it just off idle, they're pulling an atomized stream. So I'm going to consult with a couple of carburetor friends of mine, Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage, he's a wizard, David Vizard, another friend of mine, he's a wizard. So I'm going to consult with these guys and figure out what the best way to go with this is. Whether I should just tailor the, the driving habits to the characteristic of the carburetor or modify the booster, change the boosters out, which is a bit of a job to get the right, the right pull. But that is, the, in essence, how you do a plug read. You have to do it brand new plugs. They can't be any experience on the plugs. And you need to operate the motor in as, in as little uh, uh, variation from that, that, that full throttle run as possible. So, you know, I start the thing, do, do just a quickie burnout stage, go, and as soon as you get to the finish line, click the motor off. Take your foot off the gas and click the engine off and coast to a place where you can pull the plugs and yeah, my, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll bring a set of plugs with me and a, and a socket because you can't always get to an area where you can just coast away. So what I'll do is if I'm doing a plug read, I'll bring a set of plugs and I'll bring a socket and then coast off to the end of the shut off. Get you know your your pull off on the grass where everybody's way. Take the 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 test plugs out, throw your warm up plugs back in, and then drive it back to the pit that way. But uh, anyway, so that's that's where we're at with this. So this car now. We need to get the oil pan off of it. I'm not sure how, I don't know yet. I don't know what direction I'm gonna go with the, with the oil pan yet. You gotta get it down and figure it out. Uh, I gotta really look at the crank. I don't think it hurt itself that night, but it, it might have. Um, so I'm prepared to pull the crank back out and do whatever I have to do as far as that goes. Um, and then the carburetor, of course. So that's it. Plug reading, a, a basic primer course on plug reading, right? It's crucial, like I mean really crucial. It'll tell you every single thing you need to know, but you can't just take everything at face value. You have to do a little detective work sometimes. You have to do a little deductive reasoning. You gotta use your head. You gotta put your head in gear and go. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.